All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I am going to show you a very specific problem with EDIUS 10. This problem is to do with consolidation and the way that EDIUS 10 renames your media after you've done a consolidation. Now, just to be clear, this particular issue has been around for a very long time with EDIUS. I've personally noted this 12 years ago. I've asked, could this ever be fixed, as has a lot of other EDIUS users. But to date, it's not being fixed. And unfortunately, we are now on EDIUS 10, and this problem still hasn't been fixed. So what I'm going to do is show you a project here. I'll run through the consolidation procedure. But quickly, what you've really got to understand here, and the reason why this is a massive problem, is because what's going to happen, you will see that EDIUS changes the source names of the files. Now, that is a massive big deal if you you're working within a system where let's say you're using other software that has to look directly at that source media once its name's been changed other things won't know what it is also you may be dealing with other people who are unfamiliar with the source footage that being the case they want to be able to identify stuff off like a queue list or something to do with the name structure of the media and things like that also you might be working on long form stuff such as films and whatnot or anything that might be using a traditional reels based setup in which case you may have a lot of like you know named media which is to do with real number takes and slate numbers and stuff like that once again if you're working like that and all this stuff is getting changed by edius after the consolidation then it's going to be a huge problem so what i'm going to do is just go into one of my media drives here I've got a little folder set up here that says new ferry. Here's a consolidate folder. There's nothing in it just yet. I will be using that folder to actually consolidate into. So here's the new ferry folder. This is basically some footage of a thing that I'm editing up. Now in here, I have a media folder. Now for the best part, I have names of media in here, which at the very least, I understand exactly what this media is. So as a, for instance, some stuff here, car pass one, car pass two, car pass three, that obviously means something to me and anybody else who may look at this footage. Also, I then have clip one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Now, whilst they are not so descriptive, they still, however, have a proper numeric reference. Further down here, I also have a bunch of other clips which have got meaningful titles. Up here in the to sort folder, I have now got stuff which has got the original source names from the camera. Now, although these haven't been sorted into any particular kind of naming structure, once again, they do have identifiable numbers. So I could actually reference to these with anybody else who's unfamiliar with the material and whatnot, or indeed, these numbers would be getting referenced to if the same media was being looked at by another piece of software or just anything generally in your video post-production workflow. Okay, so let me come back here. So what I'm gonna do, I will go to my project folder. So I'm just gonna launch this. Okay, so my project is now open. And as we can see here, I have got a folder that says main media. And this is some of that footage that I've just shown you from the source files and source folders with all the meaningful names in. Then obviously I've got here something that says media to source. Once again, although it doesn't have very meaningful names, it does have identifications nonetheless. And within the timeline down here, I've used various parts of these clips to build up this little 30 second intro for something that I'm doing. So at this point, I'm really happy that everything is all working well. I've got all my little edits on the go and I've got a whole bunch of things here which have got very meaningful names. And like I said earlier on, these may refer to some kind of cue sheet or something which everybody else within a production is referring to and may well be using very meaningful slate numbers or real numbers or anything like that. So at this point, for whatever reason, I want to consolidate this section of the project. Now this may be getting used to go elsewhere so that somebody else could then work upon it to do with say coloring or anything like that. But once again, it is really important that we're all on the same page as far as the actual proper names of the media is concerned. Now don't forget if you were working in another program as well, and that program was referencing to certain particular media names within your bin structure or your physical bin structure as it were your folders for your media on your media drive all of these clips have to maintain that exact same naming structure all the way through your post-production process so what i'm going to do here 
is go to the consolidate media function or the consolidate project function so with the consolidate window now open what i'm going to do first of all is tell edius to send the data to a particular folder so that's why i've got this z consolidate folder here so i'll put it in there also i'm selecting custom so in here we have a number of options that we would like to be able to do to the media and whatnot as it gets consolidated now within here you also have to be careful as to what you're gonna do which may end up changing like say media length and size and stuff like that especially if that's in reference to other forms of like post-production processing that you're going to be doing with other programs as well so for the sake of this one assuming that i was still wanting to maintain some kind of like you know solid link with the media to other programs i wouldn't want to touch the length of the media however part of consolidation is to also trim the media and give it handles and stuff in order to make your file sizes smaller however one thing to bear in mind here with edius it is unable to do that to a vast majority of the codecs that you are likely to use but Right now, that doesn't particularly bother me because I would want to leave the actual media elements like wholesale, as it were, exactly as they were originally with their entire lengths and such. So let's see what I'm going to do here. I'll just say remove unused clips in the timeline. That would be something that would be normal if you're trying to clean things up. Let's see, leave only areas used in the timeline. Well, I won't click that because that would force a trim and I don't want to do a trim. However, if you were doing a trim, you could set your handles here and stuff like that. Let's see, copy used files to project folder. Yes, let's do that. Delete unused files uh, in the project. I won't select that right now. The only reason being is because obviously I've not finished with the original source files and such. Okay, so that all seems in order. So what I'm gonna do now is hit okay. So that's gonna go off. And what that's gonna do now is copy the edius data for all the sequence and edits and only the relevant clips that it needs to in keeping with the way I've told it to do it. So what I'm gonna do here is exit edius. And then what I will do, let me go to my folders here. I'll go to consolidate. Now what we've got here, as we can see, is a project that says new ferry, which is cool. However, if I go into the consolidate folder and the files, we can see here now that Edius has completely renamed all of these files and given them names that one, don't mean anything to me and two, don't mean anything to anybody else or any other program. So right now, if we were using other bits of software to reference back to the same files say through some form of common kind of project or edl or something like that we definitely wouldn't be able to use an extended workflow if this is what is going to happen with the media now if we open up edius what we're going to find is that yes edius is fine with it all because edius doesn't use those names within the physical naming structure within its bins so let me just show you that so as you can see here, this is exactly what we were expecting to see. And here is the media with the relevant names and such. So from the point of view of Edius itself, nothing has changed. So if you're just using Edius on its own and you have no interest in going back to the original names of the files within the actual consolidated bin structure, then maybe this is okay. But like I keep saying, the big problem we have here is that once Edius has changed all of these names we're simply not going to be able to use the original files within anything that had been referencing them to date up to this point before edius starts changing all of the names okay so there we have it then this was just an example to show people that unfortunately this particular bug that needed fixing a very long time ago hasn't been fixed within edius 10 so if you're thinking about upgrading to edius 10 or indeed if you're thinking about kind of migrating as well from another nle these are serious considerations that you're going to have to take on board before making that decision. I will also be showing some more issues that still reside within Edius 10. And I think the sad thing here, and especially for me, is that with Edius 10 being an upgrade and a reworking of Edius, you know, 
all of these things should no longer be here. The first priority should have been to have fixed all of the bugs that are related to like legacy issues and stuff in order for us to be able to move forward properly with Edius. I'm considering that these are things that many different Edius users have been asking for fixes on for many years. It really is a very sad situation with Edius 10 right now. Also, there are a number of other things as well to do with Edius 10's new ability to do high resolutions and stuff, which is also going to impact within itself in day-to-day -day operation. There will be a video I'll be doing soon as well, showing that the actual graphic UI overlay or the video overlay for the player just simply won't work beyond certain resolutions and certain frame rates. And that's regardless of how powerful a system you have have to play that media back on as well anyways hopefully people have found this interesting and hopefully it's been informative for certain people and don't forget as well i will be from here on in putting all of my edius related videos in one place where you can get at by going to www.edius.co.uk anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now